NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft has entered a new region at the far reaches of our solar system that scientists feel is the final area the spacecraft has to cross before reaching interstellar space. Scientists refer to this new region as a magnetic highway for charged particles because our sun's magnetic field lines are connected to interstellar magnetic field lines there. This connection allows lower energy charged particles that originate from inside our heliosphere or the bubble of charged particles the sun blows around itself to zoom out and allow higher energy particles from outside to stream in. Before entering this region, the charged particles bounced around in all directions, as if trapped on local roads inside the heliosphere. The Voyager team infers this region is still inside our solar bubble because the direction of magnetic field lines has not changed. The direction of these magnetic field lines is predicted to change when Voyager breaks through to interstellar space. These new results were described at an American Geophysical Union meeting in San Francisco on Monday. Quote, although Voyager 1 is still inside the sun's environment, we can now taste what it's like on the outside because the particles are zipping in and out on this magnetic highway, said Edward Stone, Voyager project scientist at the California Institute of Technology, Pasadena. We believe this is the last leg of our journey to interstellar space. Our best guess is it's likely just a few months to a couple of years away. The new region isn't what we expected, but we've come to expect the unexpected from Voyager. Since December 2004, when Voyager 1 crossed a point in space called the Termination Shock, the spacecraft has been exploring the heliosphere's outer layer, called the heliosheath. In this region, the stream of charged particles from the sun, known as solar wind, abruptly slowed down from supersonic speeds and became turbulent. Voyager 1's environment was consistent for about five and a half years. The spacecraft detected that outward speed of the solar wind slowed to zero. The intensity of the magnetic field also began to increase at that time. Voyager data from two onboard instruments that measure charged particles showed the spacecraft first entered this magnetic highway region July 28, 2012. The region embedded and flowed toward Voyager 1 several times. The spacecraft entered this region again August 25th, and the environment has since been stable and the environment has been stable since. Quote, if we were judging by the charged particle data alone, I would have thought we were outside the heliosphere, said Stamatios Kramingas, principal investigator of the Low Energy Charged Particle Instruments, based on the John Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, Laurel MD. But we need to look at what all the instruments are telling us, and only time will tell us whether our interpretations about this frontier are correct. Spacecraft data revealed the magnetic field became stronger each time Voyager entered the highway region. However, the direction of the magnetic field lines did not change. We are in a magnetic region unlike any we've seen before, about 10 times more intense than before the termination shock. But the magnetic field data show no indication we're in interstellar space, said Leonard Berliga, a Voyager magnetometer team member based at NASA's, based at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. The magnetic field data turned out to be the key to pinpointing when we cross the termination shock, and we expect this, and we expect these data will tell us when we first reach interstellar space. Voyager 1 and 2 were launched 16 days apart in 1977. At least one of the spacecraft has visited Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Voyager 1 is the most distant human-made object, about 11 billion miles, 18 billion kilometers away from the sun. The signal from Voyager 1 takes approximately 17 hours to travel to Earth. Voyager 2, the longest continuously operated spacecraft, is about 9 billion miles, 15 billion kilometers away from our sun. While Voyager 2 has seen changes similar to those seen by Voyager 1, these changes are much more gradual. Scientists do not think Voyager 2 has reached the magnetic highway. The Voyager spacecraft were built and continue to be operated by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Caltech manages JPL for NASA. The Voyager missions are part of NASA's Heliophysics System Observatory, sponsored by Heliophysics Division of the Science Mission Directorate of NASA, headquartered in Washington. Voyager 1 lives on. Currently, Voyager 1 is more than 23.4 billion kilometers or 14.6 billion miles and gaining most of the time from Earth. You can watch the distance grow and see both Voyager spacecraft's current positions in space on NASA's website. For the last decade, Voyager 1 has been cruising in interstellar space beyond the reach of our sun's magnetic field. The field has offered the craft little protection from cosmic rays and other interstellar radiation, much as Earth's magnetic field offers some protection from high-energy particles and radiation from the sun. 
Cosmic rays are known to interfere with electronics here on Earth. When one of those high-speed energetic particles strikes a computer chip, it can cause small memory errors, which add up over time. And it's reasonable to expect to be an issue for Voyager 1's onboard computers too. A mystery like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of Voyager's mission, said Voyager 1 and 2 project manager Susan Dodd in a statement, date to May, in a statement dated in May. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond what mission planners anticipated were also in interstellar space, a high radiation environment that no spacecraft have flown in before. We need to wait and see what new perils encounter Voyager next on its travels, and what new discoveries await. Voyager 1 was launched from Cape Canaveral on September 5th, 1977. The spacecraft encountered Jupiter on March 5th, 1979, and Saturn November 12th, 1980. Then, because its trajectory was designed to fly close to Saturn's large moon Titan, Voyager 1's path was bent northward by Saturn's gravity, sending the spacecraft out of the elliptical plane, the plane in which all planets except Pluto orbit the Sun. Launched on May 2nd, 1972, the Pioneer 10 mission officially ended on March 31st, 1997. However, NASA's Ames Research Center, Montfield, California, intermittently received scientific data from Pioneer as part of the training program for flight controllers of the Lunar Prospector spacecraft now orbiting the moon. To quote them, the Voyager mission today presents an unequaled technical challenge. The spacecraft are now so far from home that it takes nine hours and 36 minutes for radio signal traveling at the speed of light to reach Earth said Ed B. Massey, project manager for the Voyager Interstellar mission. Having completed their planetary explorations, Voyager 1 and its twin, Voyager 2, are studying the environment of space in the outer solar system. Although beyond the orbits of all the planets, the spacecraft still are within the boundary of the sun's magnetic field called the heliosphere. Science instruments on both spacecraft sent signals that scientists believe are coming from the outermost edge of the heliosphere, known as the heliopause. The heliosphere results from the sun emitting a steady flow of electrically charged particles called the solar wind. As the solar wind expands supersonically into space in all directions, it creates a magnetic bubble at the heliosphere around the sun. Eventually, the solar wind encounters the electrically charged particles and magnetic field in the interstellar gas. Science data sets are returned to Earth in real time to the 34-meter Deep Space Network, the DSN antennas located in California, Australia, and Spain. Both spacecraft have enough electricity and attitude control propellant to continue operating until about 2025, when electrical power produced by the RTGs will no longer support science instrument operation. At that time, Voyager 1 will be almost 150 times farther from the Sun than the Earth, more than 20 billion kilometers, almost 14 billion miles away. On February 7th, Voyager 1 will be 10.4 billion kilometers, 6.5 billion miles from Earth, and is departing the solar system at a speed of 17.4 kilometers per second, 39,000 miles per hour. At the same time, Voyager 2 will be 8.1 billion kilometers, 5.1 billion miles from Earth, and is departing the solar system at a speed of 15.9 kilometers per second, or 35,000 miles per hour. So guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.